What is up guys, Taiki here. Welcome to the State of DeFi Report for December. Uh, I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas and you know, 2022, off for year, right? Um, you know, uh, it's pretty bad, but you know, instead of crying about the past, you know, let's try to look forward into the future and think about, you know, what kind of stories, what kind of narratives, what kind of projects have the fundamentals to actually survive this type of bear market, especially when, you know, people can clip four to 5% uh, yield on, you know, I guess fiat dollars outside the crypto ecosystem. So it's really crunching the types of uh, yield opportunities that you can uh, do on chain. Um, a lot of people, right, um, less sophisticated people um, are, have been saying that farming is dead. Um, and, you know, I, I will be honest, I think 90, 95% of farming, uh, you know, the, 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 like the basic yield farming, right, that, you know, got people like retail into crypto, right, like single staking ETH to earn 20% or, you know, entering random pool twos, like uni v2 style pools, right? I mean, those are definitely dead. Um, I think if you want to earn like actual yield that you're going to be happy with in 2023, you're going to have to, you know, go out the risk curve or, you know, actually like learn different types of LP strategies they can do. I'll talk about that. Um, I think GLP Track Crypto I talked about, um, but also um, the people that's probably going to make the most amount of sustainable yield are going to be people that actually know how to do concentrated liquidity, not only for, you know, Uni V3, right, Uniswap, but for also for NFTs. And I'll talk about, um, you know, I, I've been trying to get into NFTs more. Um, I, I recently bought a Pudgy Penguin, um, and I've recently been, been sweeping floors of uh, the, the Penguin ecosystem and, you know, being an LP. So I'll talk about that later. Um, and, you know, there's that. Um, and, you know, we'll also talk about, you know, Alameda, right? Um, they're blowing the fuck out, right? So they were notorious for dumping. So, you know, who is going to take their place as the, as the notorious farm and dumpers of, you know, the DeFi ecosystem? And, you know, if, it, if, if we don't step up, right? If the humble farmer army does not step, step up to farm and dump tokens right now, right? Like we have to take advantage of the liquidity that exists on chain, right? Like farm and dump, right? That is the motto for uh, at least Q1. Um, or it's been the motto for Q4 and Q1 of uh, next year and hopefully not in Q2, right? Maybe we can actually have some capital appreciation, but uh, you know, definitely looking into farming and dumping strategies. Uh, so uh, before I, I get into, you know, talking about um, how we are the new Alameda, uh, let's talk about the staked ETH benchmark and LSD tokens and th these LSD tokens, right? They're not they're not the ones that you find at Coachella. Um, it's it's actually like liquid staking derivatives, uh, so things like Lido, Rocket Pool, Frax, um, Stakewise. Um, and I'll talk about like, why I think that sector has really strong fundamental tailwinds for Q1 and Q2 of next year. Okay, uh, so let's talk about that first. Um, none of this financial advice. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, these are I, I'm recording this on the 26th. I hold these three tokens. Um, you know. Yeah, I, I hold these three tokens, so I'm biased, uh, obviously, uh, but let, let's keep talking uh, about the stake each benchmark. So, um, you know, if you think about, I guess, like risk assets, right? Um, when people can earn 45% yield on like dollars, um, it makes risk assets less attractive to hold, hold right? I, I mean, obviously. Um, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, dollars have been leaving the ecosystem, um, but you can apply the same line of thinking for I guess on chain yield for crypto, um, you know, if you if you're trying to like actually go at the risk curve, and that is the staked ETH benchmark, okay? Because right now, right, you can stake ETH uh, using these liquid staking derivatives, whether it's Frax ETH, Lido, Rocket Pool, or RE, you know, stake wise, and you can earn like five to ten percent yield, right, um, pretty safely. Um, and okay, maybe maybe not. Okay, I mean, you know, like you always do your own research. Um, and you, you can also like buy things like Coinbase ETH, right, which is trading at a discount. Um, and you know, things like Qcoin ETH, Kraken ETH, you know, they, they're all trading at discounts. And if you're willing to buy them and sit on them, you can actually earn like close to 10% yield, uh, sometimes even more, uh, depending on the discount. But you know, for example, this is Frax ETH, right, you can earn 8.5% on Ether, right, uh, that pay, that's paid in ETH. And then this is the curve pool, 8%. Um, Right, you can LP in there an 8%. And as you can see, right, I mean, there's no wonder why Fraxy has been going up because, you know, they're offering competitive rates. So the, 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 the concept is if it can like, yield you over 8% in a relatively safe manner, right, as in, you know, it's low risk of rug, low risk of exploit, um, the farm, like the token isn't going to dump, right? Um, so it's like relatively sustainable. Then the risk reward of other yield opportunities in DeFi get really crunched. Right, because you know I can stake my ETH with Frax and earn eight percent. So if there's like this new project offering me fifteen percent yield on ETH, I mean, first of all, like where is it coming from? But you know, secondly, like you know what, like I I don't I don't I don't want to deal with those stress, right? It's like I'd rather just stake it with Lido, stake it with Frax, like Rocket Pool, whatever, 
earn my 8% and not even like have to deal with these like random DeFi protocols with anon founders with no track record. Um, and that's, I mean, I've been, I've been saying this for quite some time now, but I expect like more, I mean, it, it's already happening, but you know, more DeFi TVL, right? Money to flow back onto mainnet uh, to take advantage of this um, and to, all, to also de-risk from bridge risk and for people to also um, de-risk uh, their money, uh, right? Their like TVL um, on like random protocols and reconsolidate it into like DeFi blue chips, which is Curve, Aave, Uniswap, etc. Because um, yeah, like eight percent, sixteen percent. Yeah, I mean that's kind of a big deal, right? If some like, random protocol can offer sixteen percent, but is it worth the risk? Probably not, right? Probably not. Um, and I think there's a relatively good case to be made for these DeFi 1.0 tokens to actually outperform in 2023. Um, they're, they're like memed as worthless governance tokens because they were down only against ETH in 2021. In 2022, it's been doing okay. Um, but I do think that, um, I think the alt one, oh, like alt one narrative is kind of dead uh, right now, right? There's like no demand for block space. Um, and if you think about the type, types of tokens that like with fundamentals that people are willing to hold, I think it's going to be, you know, cash generating tokens. Um, and even if they don't like share the revenue, right? Uh, if, even if they don't have like revenue share, you know, you can think of it as like, you know, investing in like angel, it's like, it's like angel investing, right? Like you're investing in the future of the protocol, like some stocks uh, in, in, in the stock market, like yield 0% dividends, uh, but there's still demand for them, right? Uh, if the fundamentals are strong and they're, you know, gaining market share and whatnot. So, um, I mean, I'm not like, you know, advocating for like some of these tokens, but um, I think there's a strong case to be made for it. Uh, and yeah, I think TVL dominance for ETH um, and its layer twos will continue to go up. Arbitrum actually hit number four recently, uh, flipped Polygon and Avalanche. Um, and I think it's, uh, I'm pretty sure Arbitrum is going to flip Tron and Binance Smart Chain in 2023. Um, and yeah, the second point in your project is going to have trouble attracting to be able to, to poor risk adjusted, poorer risk adjusted returns. Um, and you know, like people can launch random like new projects and like they can hype it up, right? They can like, you know, um, you know, pay influencers and like shill it and then like, give them CD allocations. It's, it's like, you know, it's, it's probably not going to attract that much money, right? Like in the, in the grand scheme of things. Um, so, I mean, I feel like generally like a rule of thumb that you can deploy, right? Is maybe consolidate to uh, your capital to like, you know, this, the blue chips. Um, and then when, you know, money is flowing back sometime next year, hopefully, uh, maybe you can then like spread out um, across different protocols and then, you know, actually look at the fundamentals of different projects and allocate capital. There. So that's kind of how I'm viewing it. Um, and, you know, it's it's kind of like, you know, if you can earn 45% on certificates of deposits um, on Fidelity or something, then there's like no point earning 2% on Aave. Uh, and similarly, if you can earn 8% on ETH, then there's no point earning 20% on ETH on like some random, like whatever project, right? So let's talk about LSD tokens, right? Liquid staking derivative tokens and why I think they have really strong tailwinds for the next couple of quarters. So let's actually look at this. So um yeah, actually let's look at this first actually um so this is um for all the L ones right um hopefully you can see this it says a staking ratio so it kind of looks at the percent of the l1 token that's staked relative to the entire uh, circulating supply so ETH has roughly 13 percent of their right um supply stake whereas cardano has 71 percent bnb like you know like I mean, CZ has 90% of its staked. Solana, uh, okay, maybe this number's changed, uh, but you know, it's 69%. Avalanche 61, Polygon 37, but you know, it's like multi-sig. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, it's like the majority of L1 tokens, they have a pretty high staking ratio, because why not, right? Like if you can earn, like, you know, in, in the case of staked ETH, right? If you can stake ETH, earn 5%-ish, um, and then use it as collateral on DeFi, you can LP for it, and there's like no reason for you to hold ETH over staked ETH. And I expect this number to you know, match these figures, um, maybe like 60 to 80% by the end of 2023, okay? So you might be asking yourself like, why Like, why is it only 13%? Well, it's because, you know, beacon chain withdrawals are not live yet. And uh, Tim Baiko, right, of, right, that he, he like help, help, helps work on Ethereum. Um, but uh, he mentioned that liquid, uh, sorry, beacon chain withdrawals will be enabled around March of next year. So what that means is uh, if you actually go to, um, Okay, so let's actually go back to use scan. What you can do is you can look at beacon chain or beacon deposit contract, was it? Um, 
Yeah, so you can look a beacon deposit contract and right now like roughly 16 million right roughly 19 billion dollars worth of ETH is staked with the beacon chain and starting march people can actually start to withdraw uh you know i guess the ETH from the beacon chain uh this could be some fun right around march right because you know there's going to be 19 billion dollars that was previously locked that's going to be under enters uh, supply and I'm, I'm sure that's going to bring like extra selling right because uh, but I mean, if you think about it, right? It's like the people that stake in the Beacon Chain, they did it like in twenty twenty, and if people, if someone was like willing to stake, you know, at least thirty two ether into the Beacon Chain um, in twenty twenty, then if you think about the psychographic of that type of person, then chances are, right, they're like longer term aligned, they're probably like well off financially, um, and you know, like even if they sell, right, it might be for the tax purposes. Um, I don't think it's gonna create significant amounts of selling, but you know, there's definitely gonna be some incremental selling, right? Uh, we can. We definitely can't deny that. Um, and I guess I can link this in the description, but uh, nice Dune analytics dashboard by Mr. Hill Dobby. Um, that kind of goes over like how the supply, the LSD tokens are uh, distributed. So, you know, 13% of ETH is staked. Um, not like, like roughly 30% by LIDA, right? They're like definitely like the, the monopoly, um, you know, kind of goes over uh, here. And what I wanted to go over is uh, here, right? So right now, 89% um, of I guess ETH, right? Like liquid staking derivative tokens are staked with Lido, followed by Rocket Pool, Anchor. I mean, Anchor kind of got exploited recently, so I don't know about that. Stake wise, um, etc. Um, and then, you know, there's like all these centralized exchanges uh, that also stake it. Uh, but given what happened to FTX and whatnot, um, I feel like, you know, less retail will be, um, will be open to staking their ETH with centralized exchanges. I mean, of course, like when sentiment shifts, right? When, when like retail comes back, then yeah, like people will like stake it on Coinbase because um, it's easy, right? Um, I think Coinbase takes like, like a 25% fee, but like, you know, like a less sophisticated retail, like they don't, they don't really care, right? It's like, oh, I'll stake with Coinbase. Um, but I definitely expect, right? Uh, like the argument I'm making is right now, 13% of ETH is staked. Um, I expect that number to be 60 to 80% by the end of the year. So, you know, from for, for like next 12 months, we have to see more ETH enter the liquid staking derivative token landscape. And of course, right now it's majority led by Lido, right? Um, but I think once people um, get their ETH out of the beacon chain, there's gonna be some rebalancing slash reshuffling process where, you know, maybe if people feel uncomfortable about like the centralization risk with Lido, uh, even though, you know, it's better than like, I guess Coinbase or Binance or Kraken having the majority to share, um, if someone gets like, you know, a bunch of ETH back, maybe they'll distribute their ETH amongst the different LSD tokens or uh, LSD projects such as Rocket Pool, Frax, Stakewise. And I think, you know, generally, I think that's gonna bring significant tailwinds uh, for these types of projects. Um, so let's go back to here. Um, and there, there are a few other uh, reasons um, why these types of tokens can do well. Um, so the first one, right, farming emissions can end post withdrawals. Um, so I've heard arguments on like why like farming emissions might continue, but basically the idea is you know like right now, um, let's say let's say uh, Lido, right, like eat and stake eat. Uh, there's a pool on curve, there's a pool on balancer, um, and right now Lido is incentivizing liquidity, so the eat to stake eat ratio can be kind of the same. Um, there's no reason for these two tokens to trade at par um, because you can't really withdraw the like like the ETH underlying staked ETH. Um, but you know, there's always gonna be a buyer of a staked ETH at some price, um, because if someone is willing to wait until Beacon Chain withdrawal, withdrawals are live in March, April-ish, um, you know, they can redeem like whatever, you know, ETH is underlying staked ETH. Um, so you can argue that in post withdrawals, right? Once withdrawals are actually enabled, um, these like tokens such as Lido, they can stop their emissions because, you know, like post withdrawals, they can, they can, someone can buy staked ETH and then redeem their ETH immediately. Um, maybe not immediately because I think the maximum um, withdrawals are going to be like 40,000 ETH per day. So it's not, it's going to be like a slow trickling process. Uh, so it's not perfect, right? There's like a time, um, yeah, there's, there's like opportunity cost, opportunity cost and whatnot. Um, but basically, right, um, these projects can almost immediately end their emissions or have their emissions go down by over 50%, right? So less uh, inflation, right, for the token. Uh, second, um, the ETH staking rate is 13%. Um, expect 60 to 80% by end of 2023. And if all these LSD projects take a 10% fee, right, on ETH, then, you know, these projects are going to be making a bunch of money. Um, some of them will not be returning value to shareholders or like token holders. Um, but, you know, if you're bullish ETH and these projects denominate their profit in ETH um, and you expect, you know, four to five X increase uh, or four to six X increase in the amount of ETH that's going to enter the LSD space, then I think that's gonna bring like substantial tailwinds for all these projects. 
um, and that's definitely gonna be a narrative, right? So it's gonna be Q1, Q2, um, definitely. I think that's gonna be roughly the timeline on like when this will take effect. And obviously the question, oh sorry, before we get into like the individual projects, um, you know, you might be asking like, like why does the withdrawal even matter, right? Um, and that's because, you know, there's like currently there's a liquidity risk, right? Because if right now you take your ETH and you stick it with a liquid staking derivative, I mean, you get this liquid token back, like stake deed, um, but as we saw with like the 3AC collapse, right? Um, part of like the growth for some of these liquid staking derivative tokens uh, was created by leverage. So whenever there is like a mass liquidation event, um, you know, these staking derivatives can trade up, like trade much below uh, par. Um, I think um, stake deed traded like 7% below like the ETH peg. Um, and, you know, there, there, there's like risk, right? If you stake it on the beacon chain. Um, but I think post withdrawals, right? If it actually gets shipped uh, around March or April, um, it's gonna de-risk this, uh, like, de-risk, I guess, liquid staking derivative significantly. So it should lead to a mass influx of more people just, you know, going to Lido, going to Rocky Pool, going to Frax, staking their ETH, uh, earning 5%, and then, you know, using those tokens within DeFi. Uh, so once those risks are, you know, gone, um, I just expect more people to stake their ETH, okay? So that's kind of how it goes. Um, I've talked about, I mean, not, not to nitpick on Aave, right? Um, but I've talked about, um, I guess the, the DeFi 1.0 is dead meme, right? Um, and they've kind of been dead, right? I mean, they pumped a lot in 2020, right? Um, in early 2021. And then, I mean, this is the valuation against Ether, right? So this is Aave to the ETH ratio. It's just like going down. Um, you can argue it's kind of bottoming out, um, but you know, I mean, I, I don't really buy this thing right now. Um, but you know, if you look at the ETH valuations for the other LSD tokens, such as Lido, right? Um, you know, I mean, the tokenomics for Lido aren't that great, right? I mean, the majority of it goes to VCs and seed investors and like, you know, influencers. Um, but, you know, it's it's holding up relatively well, right? Um, and uh, that, that's cool. Uh, this is Rocket Pool, right? Um, you know, it's kind of putting in higher highs and higher lows. That's pretty interesting. Um, this is stake-wise, right? Also putting in higher highs and higher lows, kind of. Uh, so I expect, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that it's gonna go up in USD value, um, because if the market takes a shit, then, you know, there's, I mean, I mean yeah. Um, but I think there's a reasonable case um, to, to be made for all these LSD tokens to outform like 90% of crypto tokens, okay? So that's kind of the argument I'm making. Um, Frax has had its boom and bust cycles because, I mean, they used to be like a pure stablecoin project. Um, yeah, but you know, it's been, I mean, you know, it has like a similar chart to Lido, um, as it, as in, they're not like lo really losing value against either ever since Fraxseed has been announced because it was announced like roughly the end of May. Um, and ever since then, it's been relatively stable. Um, maybe I'm nitpicking there, but basically I think LSD tokens, um, it's hard to bet on which one's gonna win. Um, obviously right now Lido has like a significant share, uh, but you know, with Lido, there's gonna be social and economic headwinds that they're gonna be facing, um, you know, as people like feel less comfortable with Lido having so much of the share. So, you know, if people do rebalance all the ETH that they have amongst these, you know, different types of liquid staking derivatives, um, I just think that, you know, a rising boat lifts, uh, sorry, a rising tide lifts all boats, right? That's kind of uh, the argument I'm making, um, yeah. So let's talk about some of the tokens. I'm not gonna talk about FXS because I've talked about it before. Let's talk about Lido, Rocket Pool, and uh, Stakewise. Um, not gonna lie, um, I'm really like still really early into like my research phase. So um, you know, to be honest, I have, I have no idea which one's gonna win. I mean, Lido is probably gonna win, but you know, which one's gonna be like the best investment of 2023? I I have no idea. Uh, but I'll, I'll like present some data in case like you're interested. But you know, Lido, um, pure government token. Like I said, I think like 80% of the token. I mean, the majority of the token went to like you know investors, right? Um, but you know. That's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Um, obviously, it's not a great thing, um, but you know, I guess they have a bunch of money in, in the treasury, um, and they were able to create this amazing product. Um, you know, and the one thing I um, I've observed is that um, because tokens are like down so bad, right? Um, the opportunities in the public markets, you can argue that like you know they might be better than the opportunities in the private markets because in twenty twenty one, right, we saw all these like. You know, people like create their own VC firms to like get like exclusive rounds, um, you know, to like dump tokens and whatnot. Um, and I guess, I guess like that's where people like, you know, piled money in. Um, but you know, like, like at this point, right? Um, surely there has to be better opportunities in the public markets. Uh, so, for, so for example, right? Um, Lido raised $73 million back in May of 2021 from Paradigm. And this was for 10% of the token supply. Uh, so their cost basis was 73 cents. And back in August of 2022, um, Lido, uh, 
I forget like what exact price they sold at, but you know, it was like a do- roughly a dollar forty-five, right? They sold it to Dragonfly Capital, right? R- like roughly one percent of the Lido token supply, and you know, it just means that Lido is extremely well capitalized. Um, they can reinvest all that money into the business, right? Um, so it's they're very likely to lose at this point. Um, but you know, the round one cost base like seventy-three cents. Round two cost base is uh, one forty-five. By the way, like th- these uh, these rounds have a one-year lockup with I think one-year cliff. Um, I think people have been sharing. Um, okay, I, I, I don't have to start, but basically, you know, um, if you go to if you look up Lido tokenomics, right? Um, people think that the emissions uh, for Lido have tapered off, but that's not really true because it doesn't take into account all these team treasury tokens that they sold to VCs that are now starting to vest. Uh, so th- just keep these in mind. But in you know, Lido is like roughly a dollar right now, um, so you can argue that you're kind of getting in like relatively favorable favorable valuations relative to the VCs. Um, and you know, to be honest, if I were gonna enter like a five year coma, uh, I would probably hold Lido, right? I don't hold Lido right now, obviously, but yeah. Um, let's talk about Stakewise and then Rocket Pool. Um, Stakewise is kind of interesting. Um, they're like the lowest market cap um, out of all this, and they're currently transitioning to Stakewise V3. Um, and I think I have a chart somewhere. Um, where's, the, where's the chart that compares the valuations? Um, shoot, I don't have it right here. Uh, well, that, that, that's a bummer. But, but basically, um, you know, if you look at the PE ratios of Stakewise and Lido, they're relatively the same. Um, you know, relative to like the the amount of TVL that they have. Um, so you can argue that maybe Stakewise can be like a good trade. Um, but basically, V three. Um, they're going to introduce revenue share. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Um, they're going to introduce permissionless liquid staking for solo operators. That's really good. They're, they're, they're kind of following the, the footsteps of Rocket Pool. Um, I'll provide a bunch of resources in the description below um, because, I mean, I, I don't want to like, bore your time or waste, waste your time um, talking about all these things. Um, you know, but basically, you know, you, you can bond your stake wise with these different vaults. So, uh, you know, um, you're like taking on the risk, right, in case, uh, you know, it's like some ETH gets slashed. Uh, but in return, right, there's going to be, um, you know, stakewise can earn, like, I guess, yield denominated in ETH, which could be cool. Um, and yeah, like, I, I'm in a Discord. Um, it's fair to think that uh, stakewise can be staked in a vault um, for a share of the protocol reading for the DAO, um, and it's going to be used as insurance against slashing. That's kind of how it works. And Kiri, Kiria, this guy, um, you know, he's on the team, and uh, he's assuming that it's going to be roughly a 90 to 100 percent revenue share that's going to stake wise uh, so you know maybe you can stake stake wise or you know, right um but obviously you're taking on the risk um uh for uh you know insurance against slasher uh and but the thing is like we're like roughly month 20 of this vesting program so you know it's kind of you know hockey stick i mean yeah i mean there's there's inflation right i mean obviously uh so uh it could be dumped right people can dump it uh but you know just everything has different trade-offs um, and by the way, I'm not going to talk about Rocket Pool because, to be honest, like I don't think I'm sophisticated enough to talk about Rocket Pool right now, um, and like you know the merits of it. But you know, while everyone was celebrating their Christmas with their families, I was reading this paper by Mr. Jasper, the Family Ghost. This was probably like one of the best papers I've read on uh, liquid staking derivative tokens. Um, and you know, Jasper, uh, I mean, he, he's a paid contributor for Rocket Pool, right? So he's biased, but um, he gives a pretty good objective. Um, but, I mean, uh, it's biased, but you know objective, I guess, overview of the LSD landscape. Um, and if you really want to learn more about the merits of Lido versus Rocket Pool, Frax, um, stake-wise, I really recommend people, um, you know, read this. So I hope I didn't spend too much time. Okay, 23 minutes, okay. Um, that was way more than I wanted to spend on that topic, but it's okay, we'll keep going. So I think LSD tokens could be good. I don't own any right now, um, but um, I'll talk about my strategy, but I'll definitely be looking to accumulate some of these if not all, or maybe I'll just like buy a bunch of Lido or something, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely like be uh, looking to buy those things. So let's talk about the strategy, right? It's like, okay, like cool Taiki, like LSC tokens, right? Like, you know, can get me high, uh, but like how do I, you know, get high off of making money? Um, of course, you know, it's, 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 the markets are pretty difficult right now. Um, so, you know, it's not gonna be a fun strategy, but this is like definitely like the strategy that I'm employing right now. Um, and then, you know, maybe when the facts change, when like different things launch or you know, the, the fun that like, you know, the, like, I don't know, like if the fundamentals for different types of things shift, then maybe I can reallocate. But right now, uh, my mindset post FTX is like, you know what, like, obviously the markets can go down lower, right? There's like the, there's like the Genesis risk, um, 3AC, I'm mean, sorry, not just uh, Genesis, Grayscale, um, DCG, right? Like, I have no idea what's gonna happen to GBTC. Um, there could be, you know, like more, I don't know, like large players that go bust. Um, but, you know, I, I think 
in the grand scheme of things, the amount of unknown unknowns in the system are gone. Um, we all like we all know like what the risks are, um, and there could definitely be more sell pressure. But generally, right, like, I'm not really a trader, right? I don't really have an edge in trading, um, right? It's like you know, not not that, not that many people make money trading. Um, so you know what, like instead of trading, right, I'll like just try to profit from people tr speculating and trading, right? Collector uh, swap fees, um, like borrowing fees and whatnot, um, and enter these LP positions, right? Um, and think of these LP positions as my, my, like my crypto savings account. I mean, I've brought this up many, many times before, right? So it's not really out of the norm. Um, but basically what I've done is I've allocated more to these LP positions and my concept or like my, uh, my thinking is like, using the yield, farm and dumped it, uh, and then accumulate things that I actually like for 2023, right? Things I'm actually excited for. Um, because right now there's so much uncertainty um, and you can argue that the majority of the bid, right? Um, that's gonna come into crypto is gonna be um, in Bitcoin and Ether. And if that's gonna be the case, I mean, you know, we can all agree that they're like the safest assets. So um, if I can just be exposed to them, right? And have some downside protection via the stablecoin exposure, um, then, you know, like it's something I'm comfortable holding for you know the next six to 12 months. And then, you know, as the yield slowly comes in, um, I'll just like take it, sell it, and then, you know, sell it into Bitcoin, Ether, or other altcoins that I'm excited for. Uh, so right now I'm thinking like I'll, I'll use the yield and you know I'll figure out like which LSD tokens I want to accumulate, but I'll probably like just start um, like buying buying more of those with the, yield, with the yield, right? So that's kind of how I think about it. Um, so LP tokens as core positions. My So I'm GLP, TriCrypto, pseudo swap pools. I think they're really, really good, right? They pay a lot. Uh, or I mean, you know, TriCrypto pays less, um, you know, but you know, they pay, they pay pretty well um, on Convex use the yield from LP, so accumulate things I'm excited for. And if the market nukes, um, so let's say the market nukes and ETH goes like 800 or something, um, at that point, right, I'm probably gonna just bite the bullet, right? Just, you know, just really bite the bullet and just pull out um, ETH from my LP position, stake it with Lido or like whatever, right? The LSD provider and just, you know, just hope to God that the, the, the industry isn't going to zero. Um, that's definitely how I'm thinking about it. Um, because I mean I, I was tracking this a couple a uh, couple days ago, but you know I've been looking at the stablecoin flows, right? So I was just looking at the large uh, centralized stablecoins, uh, USDC, Tether, BUSD. I did it every two days manually, so I don't, I don't have to do it like you know like that much. But basically, right, like almost every couple of days, right, money is leaving the ecosystem, and you know if you think about it, like the the, the majority of coins in crypto is inflationary, right? Even ETH is inflationary, um, Bitcoin is inflationary, right? Um, but if you think about these L1 tokens, right? It's like VC circle drug, right? CD investor circle drug, right? It's like, I don't really want to touch those. Um, it doesn't mean that they can't go up, but you no, know, like I'd rather look to accumulate things with a more favorable supply schedule. Um, of course, the LSD tokens, they're all inflationary as well, but you know, they have different trade-offs, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, if you go to Deep by Lama, stablecoin going down. So it's going to be a really, really, really difficult environment for inflationary tokens uh, to outperform. Um, and if you're going to buy something, right, do it with a more favorable supply schedule. Um, and that's why I think ETH is really, really good, right? Um, it's post-merge, the inflation has dropped, like dropped like a rock. Um, and like, at, like for me at this point, like it's really hard for me to be um, bearish ETH um, the, and also like the ETH BTC ratio. Um, yeah, like looking at DeFi, looking at NFTs, the amount of activity I still see, right, within uh, those two sectors, it's really hard for me to, bear, uh, to be bearish ETH. Uh, so I'm thinking about it, right? If it's inflationary, if it looks like a farm token, if it smells like a farm token, just dump it, right? It's gonna be treated like a farm token, right? Yeah, just treat it like a farm token. So with that out of the way, let's talk about, you know, why we are the Alameda now, okay? And you might be asking yourself like, like take it, the fuck does this mean? Um, of course, you know, I, I was thinking about like what type of content to make today um, and I, I don't know, right? I'm like, you know what, like no, the markets suck. Let's incorporate some comedy, right? So let's, let's, let's fucking go. So the, the, way, the way you think about it is like, you know, we all have a coming to age, right? In life, you know, you like discover things. Um, the same applies to crypto, right? And you hit DeFi puberty when you buy a token and Alameda dumps it on you, okay? This happened a lot um, in 2020, 2021, and parts of 2022. Um, you know, you enter a farm because it's yielding 100%, and then you wake up tomorrow, and then Alameda dumped the token, and then the yield is like 10%, okay? Uh, we've all experienced it, um, and you kind of have to be dumped on for you to like understand how the entire market works, uh, and it, it's all coming of age. Uh, but, but the thing is, 
Alameda, they're gone now, right? They're blown the fuck out. They're gone, right? That guy's in jail. Uh, so who is gonna take on their responsibility to farm and dump these farm tokens? It has to be us, right? It has to be the humble farmer army. It is our chance to be the Alameda, right? We are the Alameda now, okay? Like I actually bought this hat on Amazon to really, you know, push this point through, okay? And I shit you not, I looked up Alameda Research Farm and Dump on Google, right? Google Images. And this is like one of the first things that popped up on, on, on Google, right? I'm serious, like you can, you can do it right now, right? Pause the video, do it right now. Um, and this man is no other than Curve Market Cap, right? Um, you know, a fellow, you know, he, he, he's, a, he's, he's a Curve Maxi, right? Um, and, you know, I'm su subscribed to his YouTube, I'm in his Discord, I respect this man a lot, you know, he, you know, but over a year ago, he wrote this, he made me, he made this video called Dump and Dumpers, right? It's like, Alameda is dumping my token, right? It's like, damn, like, th this sucks. Um, I, I, I just thought it was funny, you know, but no, we have to look in the mirror and say, you know what? We are the Alameda now, right? Like, we have to farm and dump these tokens, right? We have to take the liquidity on chain and just extract value out of it. Because if we're not doing it, then who 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 is right? Then then someone else is gonna do it. So like like might might as well do it now, right? And then if money comes back, then we can go risk on and sing hallelujah, kumbaya. Uh, but when money is leaving the ecosystem, right? We just have to farm and dump these things, right? Like just farm and dump, farm and dump, right? This you know, and it's 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 kind of going back on this point, right? This all be tokens is core positions. I earn the yield, I dump it, right? And then I buy things that isn't a farm token, um, or what I, what I think is less of a farm token. Okay, so. You know, like you know, let, let's let's get together. Like let let you know, sing with me, right? Like farm and dump, farm and dump, farm and dump, curve, dump it, avalanche, dump it, right? And just just dump these inflationary tokens. Just 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 dump it, right? Like curve smells like a farm token. Like, yeah, it's a farm token. Avalanche, like you know, it's, it's definitely you know stinks of a farm token. So just just dump these things, right? Um, and you know, if the fundamental shifts, just you know, maybe buy it later. I, I, I don't really know, but you know, just, you know, you LP, right? They pay you in these tokens for a reason, right? Like, you know, like you, you can't really realize these yields unless you sell them. Um, so that's kind of how I'm, I'm uh, approaching, <laughs> or I mean, that's kind of how I'm approaching markets. Um, but you know, the, it kind of works uh, for 2023 and beyond as well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still gonna have cash, but you know, my core position isn't really cash, it's LP. Oh, LP uh, positions, if that makes any sense. Um, and I really um, recommend people to um, like be humble with the markets right now. Right? I mean, I, we've all been humbled by markets, obviously. Um, but if you think about the people left on chain, right? Like the, the majority of retail has left, right? Um, the people left on chain are the sharks, okay? Uh, we all know what we're doing, right? Like we all try to like catch pumps, sell pumps or whatever. Um, but I don't, I don't really do that anymore because I am fully aware that the people left on chain know what they're doing. So simple things like, you know, Arbitrum Dex pump, like it's, it's not going to work anymore. Okay. Like everyone knows the game, right? Everyone knows that, you know, you can like it pumps sometimes and then you can like dump it. Right. But you know, if everyone knows that, then, you know, these pumps will be less sustained. Um, then you have to pay gas, you have to pay slippage, you have to pay fee. I mean, it's, it's really hard to win here. Um, so I really recommend everyone to just be longer term minded with everything that they do in crypto. Um, uh, and just try to play the long game instead of like trying to, you know, catch pumps every single week because uh, it's very unlikely to work. If you can, then, you know, go for it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's hard for me to do. Um, yeah, I talked about it before. Um, and yeah, like liquid staking derivatives, Coinbase at the discount, I think is good. Um, I like Pseudo, I like GMX, um, you know, Lido options plays and Pudgy Penguin. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about Pudgy Penguins later. Um, yeah, and if you're buying something, prioritize those with favorable supply schedules, heavy VC bags, right? I mean, you know, if it smells like a VC bag, it probably is a VC bag. Um, yeah, so that being said, let's talk about on-chain stablecoin yields and why they're not that great, right? They're, they're just like not that great, right? It's like Aave pays you 2%, 1%, then, and you can go to Fidelity and earn like 4.5% on cash, right? Um, it doesn't really make any sense to deploy, you know, stable coins like on like relatively dangerous strategies. Of course, you know, putting into curve, earning like eight to 10%, right? I think, I think that's totally fine. Uh, but generally, right, like, you know, the risk reward really isn't worth it. Um, and like risk adjusted return. Um, terms of course yeah like i said yeah the boring yield is fine but generally right i mean you know it's hard to um because everything about crypto and DeFi is like about incentives 
And if people don't have an incentive to like bridge fiat onto on the, onto the chain and use it in DeFi, then you know it's really really difficult to uh, maintain that TVL. Um, like. I don't really think that you know DeFi TVL is going to go down like a rock. Um, I think there's enough things to do on the on the blockchain, right? Uh, to you know make like an income and like you know actually like make money. Uh, but those strategies are more sophisticated, and most people don't want to deal with like learning new things. Um, yeah, and you know like I was, I was actually like telling my girlfriend, hey, like you know like it can actually <laughs> earn like almost five percent um, on Fidelity, and I was like, damn, like. I'm I'm in crypto and DeFi and I'm like shilling fucking fidelity yields like uh, I don't deserve to put this put this hat on right it's 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 really a shame um, so the idea is for like stablecoin chains or sorry stablecoin yields um, unless there's like significant upside um, it's probably not worth putting it uh, putting your capital in there um, and Mr Noodles right um, he's the founder of Rage Trade uh, he makes a pretty interesting point um, I kind of do agree with him like. I think the next like for dollars to come back into crypto, like I think someone has to like make some stablecoin product that can actually like yield sustainable yield um, that beats the treasury rate, uh, right? The CDs. Um, it's difficult, right? And people are trying to build like delta neutral vaults, um, which I'm not a huge fan of, but at least they're trying, right? And we'll see if it works. Um, and you know, there's actually this project called Umami, which is like up only against either. Um, I mean, I've talked to the team, I read the white paper. I mean, I've, I've done all the work. Um, I'm still kind of skeptical about um, Delta neutral vaults. Um, I know they did like, like back tests and stuff, but you know, it remains to be seen. Um, but you know, if this gains like 100 million TVL, like, I'll probably like 8-bit, right? Uh, at like $100 or something, right? It's like at that point, right? They're, it's probably worth the buy. Um, they're trying to create like a more transparent block buy slash Celsius type of product. Um, and they're trying to cater more towards institutions. They have a um, account with the circle, right? Um, so, you know, the, the direct the direct on ramp is much easier, um, but you know, basically the point is like most stablecoin products is not that great. Um, for me, it's like yeah, yeah. Um, I'll talk about shell protocol, which to be honest, like I'm like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, ha I have some dollars in here. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Um, it, 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 yeah, let's let's talk about it. So it's this is DeFi infra on Arbitrum with zero adoption so far. So you know, it remains to be seen, um, but. They've been live since 2020. They have a trail of bits audit. Um, you know, from what I've heard, like you have to pay like six figures to get this audit. Um, so for them to get a trail of bits audit, right, which is like arguably the best auditing firm in crypto, um, they're probably not going to rock it, right? They're probably not going to be exploited. Um, and the team is in it for the longer haul. Um, they have Docs Founder as pre-launch, um, and uh, all the work, right, that they've done before the launch is very thoughtful. Um, so I think it has potential um, until an arbitrum too. Um, and you know, you can. Like put stable coins in there, earn some yield, uh, not real yield. Um, you, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it, right? It's a speculative stable coin farm. Um, I have a bunch of slides on this, but I'm not gonna like. I I, I think I'm like over like my time th threshold. So, but you know, they're trying to create this thing called the ocean, which is kind of like an accounting system that introduces gas efficiencies to new DeFi uh, primitives. Um, they have this Proteus AMA that utilizes this accounting. Um, uh, this accounting tech, uh, followed by an NFT AMM, um, and hopefully more teams can build on in the future. So Kenny, right, the founder, uh, the base layer of the show is a protocol, uh, smart contract we call the Ocean. It's the accounting hub, which all the financial primitives are built on top of. And the idea is, you know, whenever you, you know, participate in like some complex smart contract, such as you know GMX, Convex, or like some Dex aggregator, sometimes you pay like. A lot of money in fees because you're calling all these different different smart contracts and the argument is if every DeFi primitive can share the same accounting hub then that's going to introduce gas efficiencies for everyone involved right for the smart contract developers and for the users um, and it kind of goes over the, the gas savings there right like some pink and poop brown lines um, <laughs> um, and you know they have you know this this chart here right Alice here it does not look like an Alice but you know, and like stuff like this, um, stuff like that. Okay, so the thing is, like, I would not be interested in that. Like, I would not buy this token if it was liquid. Um, I'm only in it because of the farm. It's on Arbitrum. I think more capital will flow into Arbitrum. Um, but given that they're, uh, given the team's history, their strong audits results, um, their investors, I feel comfortable farming the stables. And maybe, you know, my couple million shell points end up being worth something. Who knows? Um, and you know they have kind of this, this interesting lore. So I'll, I'll talk about like how to earn these points. You do have to pay money to earn, <laughs> which is could be a turnoff. But you know, um, but 
you know, reading this, I, I, I thought it was worth it. So they have this thing called the, the Tale of Bro Kwan's Booty, okay? Um, and basically, you know, you, you have all these NFTs um, that you can buy in order for you to increase your quota. Um, and if you open to go to the website, they have like a pretty interesting storyline, right? I'm not gonna go over the story because this is like a overview video, but um, for example, right, if you wanted farmer stables, you have you kind of have to buy one of these ex uh, one of these expanders, right? And it gives you a quota. So this gives, the, let's take a look at this, right? Expando Chad, quota increase of this. So, you know, it allows you to earn yield on up to $5,000 of the LP, up to $5,000 on USDC, up to you know, 5 ETH, um, and, you know, Shell USDC is like kind of like wrapped USDC, right? It's kind of like wrapped ETH, right? Um, very, very, I mean, yeah, like, you know, it's just the wrapped version of these uh, coins. There's like all these boosters, you can increase your yield. To be honest, like it's not probably not worth buying these things. It's, it's really worth it, uh, not really worth it. There's all this little, like these NFTs, kind of cool ponzu sauce, right? Um, I love ponzus uh, in real life, right? The actual sauce, the Japanese sauce. Um, they have some investors like Stani, Angels, um, and like, you know, these VCs. Um, and you know shell points, right? Basically, you're you LP for the AMM, and you earn these shell points. Uh, these shell points, you can't really do anything with it. But there was a government proposal that passed in early November, um, and it's going to be factored into the shell airdrop. I think it's most likely happening in January or this uh, February, or sometime in Q1. I think uh, maybe actually maybe probably not in January, so it's like February or March. Uh, so you know, like you have to buy these NFTs to earn these points. I have no idea what these points are going to be for, um, but I think that you know, in this type of market, I think investing in like infrastructure makes more sense than like trying to buy like inflationary farm tokens. So um, I'm just like farming this, right? Like who knows? Um, and you know, like someone once said, hey, like you know, like if you're deploying stables, right? It's like instead of like earning like eight percent, you might as well earn like imaginary points, right? Like ima imaginary yield, right? Imaginary PR, because um, I could be farming this for like ten percent. Or I could also be farming it for like a million percent APY, right? Depending on like what the uh, token ends up doing. Uh, I think I think I think the most likely outcome is that like, I'm probably like farming this at, like a six percent APR, uh, and I'll be very disappointed. Uh, who who knows, right? I I, uh, I I'm definitely a dreamer, right? At this point, right? Um, I'm in it for the tech, uh, so do your own research, but that's what I'm doing. So uh, let's lastly talk about Pudgy Penguins uh, and Super Swap pools. Um, I mentioned that I want to get into NFTs more, and you know. Throughout all my research, after buying some illiquid JPEGs on Avalanche and getting wrecked on that, I decided, you know what, like I, I'm gonna go back to the roots, right? Go back to Ethereum, and I bought myself a pudgy penguin, right? Look at this guy, so cute, right? Look at that mohawk, right? Um, and I'm really bullish pudgy penguins. Um, it's hard for me to explain, like in a rational manner, um, but I think Luca, who took over the project, definitely knows what he's doing, and I really like his attitude of. Just like not being purely reliant on royalties. Um, all the NFT founders that I've talked to that actually are trying to create something of value, um, they understand that royalties are going to like trend towards zero, right? Um, because market inefficiency or market efficiencies will take over, um, and you know it's not enforceable on chain. Um, I think for like all these large collections, royalties will be near zero. Um, but for like for like one on ones and like your know, like actual art, right? People can charge five percent. I think I think that's totally fine. I think that I think that's going to be like the equilibrium at some point. Um, but basically, um, what's it? yeah, but basically, um, he's trying to create IP. He's trying to uh, create partnerships with uh, retailers in the real world, um, and you know he's currently raising money to do so. Um, and I really like uh, you, you kind of have to listen to his interviews um, to really understand like why like I really buy into it. But you know I I think um, NFTs is like digital identity, like digital culture, uh, branding, and I, I really think he knows what he's doing uh, there. And uh, if you look at the floor prices of these pudgy penguins, um, I mean, obviously this is in ETH terms, and in dollar terms they're kind of down bad, but in ETH terms it's like putting in pretty bullish price action, don't you think? Um, so I bought, I bought one, um, and there's also, um, there's, there's like, I'm not sure why it's not loading. Let me refresh real quick. Uh, but, uh, yeah, basically I, I bought one um, and what the hell, um, okay, it's not loading, but you know what, let's go to Uniswap because it's probably better. Um, there's also these pudgy rods and these little pudgies um, and I swapped the floor on them, um, right? And they're also putting in a pretty bullish price action. And uh, what I did, um, let's, yeah, let's go here, um, is I swapped some rods and little pudgies. Um, so, you know, obviously NFTs have been a speculative vehicle. Um, 
to just I don't know like buy things and pay royalties and like hopefully it goes up to offset those royalties right that was like the bull market but obviously right right now like you know if you think about like the NFT landscape it's pretty harsh right if you're like an NFT trader because you know the fees are ridiculous right like OpenSea takes two point five percent and then the creators like one five percent like how do you make money right it's it's almost impossible um, so I think the best way to or at least for me right I mean keep in mind I'm like a novice I have no idea what I'm doing um, I'm like buying these. Um, you know, I swept a bunch of these rods, these dig digital fishing rods for like $600. Um, but basically like the, the way I'm thinking about it is like, you know, I, I want to get into NFTs. I think they have pretty good value. Um, and if I want to accumulate NFTs, I might as well earn yield on them, right? I might as well. And I'm not talking about like the Ponzanomic yield of, you know, the project team, like, you know, giving you more NFTs to speculate on with 10% royalties um, or like introducing like a new token where you stake your NFT to earn token. I mean, that, that doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, but like actual, um, like, you know, revenue, right? Actual yield by being an LP. Um, so, yeah, so I swept. Actually, let me, let, me, let me just share this. Okay, let me like refresh this to make sure it works. So basically, um, what I did was I swept 15 pudgies or the little pudgies, not the big one, right? The little pudgies um, for uh, 5.16 ETH, okay? I did that, as you see here, and I paired it with 3.91 ETH. Uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, you can, you can see the math, right? So, you know, I put nine ETH worth of value in the little pudgy ETH LP, um, and I did the same for rods. Um, I swept 10 rods, um, you know, I forgot when, but uh, for like four point, yeah, like whatever. Uh, basically, I swapped some rods, I swapped some ether, sorry, <laughs> some low pudgies, and I paired it with ether, and I made an LP pool on pseudoswap, as you can see here, okay? Um, let's see, let me just refresh both. As you can see, I'm very, very pre prepared for this video. Uh, so this is my pool, right? Feel free to look it up. You can do whatever you want. And I set a 3% fee. Right, so every every time someone buys or sells with this pool, I earn three percent of the fees, and my delta is three point five percent. So um, each time someone buys or sells an NFT, the price will be lowered or increased by three point five percent. Okay, and this is a pure AMM, right? So I'm providing liquidity. Anyone can buy or sell into the pool, um, and because it's an AMM, I think you know I can offer more competitive rates um, than like OpenSea slash like whatever, right? Uh, Sido takes a 0.5% fee, so basically, if you swap from here, you pay 3.5%. And fortunately, Mr. Uh, Chris Lipensky uh, from the Variant Fund made this really nice dashboard um, that kind of lets you track um, how many fees you can earn on these LPs. Um, and this pool has been live for 11 days, and I've made 0.43 ETH so far in fees. Um, and there's like, you know, I'm, maybe my real p &L is a little bit lower because of impermanent loss, right? I'm selling upside. Um, but basically, um, you know, like I said, I paired, I put 15 ether, right? And uh, sorry, 15 NFTs and 3.9 ether in here. And then people have been buying and selling, right? These dots um, at various price points. The cool thing is because the NFT price has been stable to slightly going up recently, like I'm collecting all these transaction fees uh, while I guess like my LP tokens go up, right? Because like, think of it like, like this, right? This, I mean, sure, these are JPEGs, right? And like, what the hell, these are pictures. Um, but you know, they're like altcoins with pictures. So you might as well, like what you can do is you can LP, um, provide liquidity and charge like pretty like ridiculous fees, like egregious fees, like three to 4%. Um, but people will trade it because, you know, OpenSea charges 2.5% and creators charge 5%. So if you can just like undercut like those fees, then you're gonna just be printing on like this, L this LP uh, position, if that makes any sense. I know it's kind of hard to wrap your head against, uh, but just imagine this is like Uniswap LP, right? I mean, it, it works. I, I did the same for rods, right? I bought 10 rods, paired it with some ether. Um, I charge a 4% fee. Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm like experimenting. Um, I think it's better to try for, charge 4%, right? Because people are willing to pay 4% to you, so like might as well charge them more. Uh, you can probably charge 5% to be honest, uh, because yeah, like OpenSea is ridiculous. Uh, but you know, this made 0.48 in fees and whatnot. Um, and you can argue that like, if you're buying an NFT, like, you know, like people are looking for like a like 100x, right? They want the next Board Ape Yacht Club. But like, what other chances is that you're gonna buy a Board Ape Yacht Club, right? It's like very, very low. Um, I think a more sustainable way to make money with NFTs is to just buy collections of things that you think are not scams 
that you think will hold their value or slightly go up in E-terms, create an LP pair, charge people 4%, and then people will like just salivate to trade on your pool because it's just more competitive. Um, I kind of, you know, I did the math, right? Um, in 11 days, I earned 0.43 in fees. Uh, so that's that's an effective APR of roughly 157, right? That's cool. For rods, in six days, I made 0.48 ETH. That's an effective APR of that much. Um, and I mean, like, this is like printing, right? I mean, it's actually, like, it's absolute printing. Um, and I'm definitely gonna be looking to LP for more projects. Uh, later down the line, I, I might LP for Pudgy Penguins at some point uh, when I feel like um, I have the balls to do so, because uh, that, that's a lot of money. But, um, you know, at least for this, right, I started out with like some, like, you know, single digit either. Uh, I felt a little bit more comfortable with that. Um, but it's pretty cool because, you know, for the rods, right, like that's me, right, the, the floor. I'm pretty competitive and I don't have to worry about like keep keeping up with like the price action because I just LP and then the price will uh, fluctuate manually or not not manually but uh, automatically uh, depending on the uh, the market demand um, if you go to low pudgies right um, am I the 0.43 floor um, no okay my okay my price is 443 so I am no longer the floor um, like right when I started doing this, like a lot of people were like, "Oh my god!" Like I'm gonna copy your position. So people have been like undercutting my fees and whatnot. Uh, you know, so, so like this is my right. Feel free to buy this if you want, right? And pay me three uh, percent. Okay, by the way, you don't have to. Um, but you know, just generally like it's. I, I think it's pretty interesting. Um, uh, actually, hold up. Yeah, let me let me just clear this. You know, um, a lot like for a lot of these like floor. PFP projects like that trade like fungible tokens, I think pseudo pools make sense, right? Because you know, like OP, like sellers in OpenSea, like you know, they have to pay five percent, they have to pay you know, OpenSea money. It's like it's gonna be really, really difficult for them to compete, like in price terms. Um, so what you can do is you can like be your own marketplace, right? You can just be an LP, charge four, three, four percent, um, and I think uh, if I do open a pool new pool, I'll probably charge 4 or 5% or 4.5%. Uh, I think, you know, charging as much as you can um, is like the better way because you, you get like, make way more fees, right? Because I made 0.48 here in six days, whereas I made uh, 0.43 in uh, 11 days because, you know, I only take 3%. But, you know, I still have a bunch of trades. Uh, I mean, there's a trade-off, right? I mean, like if you charge lower fees, you might get more volume. Um, to be honest, I'm not that sophisticated, so I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and maybe I'm just lucky here. Uh, but I thought that was kind of cool, right? Like, I feel like this is like a real way to actually earn money on NFTs without like w like hoping for the team to like airdrop you new NFTs, right? Or like you know waiting for the team to airdrop you tokens, right? It's like, well, please team, like you know, pump my, like give me free money, right? I mean, it's not gonna work that way anymore. Um, I think in twenty twenty three, if you want to make like real money, right, from the market, you have to learn how to be an LP. Um, I I definitely think so, um, and, and I'll talk about Uniswap um, V three later. Um, Oh, yeah, and also I guess um, Sido they raised like twelve point two eight million recently, so hopefully that can go towards improving the UI UX and <laughs> more money on marketing because their marketing is really really bad right now. So um, you know to to wrap this video up, um, you know I I mentioned this at the the top of the video, but like I said, I think you know the days of easy yield is gone. Okay, like. If you got into the DeFi because of like you know high APYs and you want that to come back, then you know you, you might have to unsubscribe and come back in twenty twenty four, right? Like that's kind of the reality. Um, if you want to like actually make money from the markets, um, that's not like from trading, right? But like more from like fees being paid by people. Um, you have to maybe maybe if you don't have to, but um, I think the best way is by. Um, participating in these automated market makers, uh, because if you can be an LP, right, and like you know, specify what p like what fees you charge for people to speculate on these tokens, then you know that like people are actually paying you to you know provide working capital, right? That's kind of how businesses work, right? Um, and I think you know, you like if you don't really know how concentrated liquidity works, um, as we approach twenty twenty three, then I think you have some work to do. I think a lot of Uniswap, like. Like a lot of people like FUD Uniswap because like oh, people that provide liquidity don't make money, ooh, broken product. But you know, I, I think those are people that don't fully understand um, LPing. They probably never LPed before. Uh, I mean, most of them, right? Like some people. I mean, it's it's not perfect, but um, I still think Unity Three is an amazing product. Um, and if you think about like how it's designed, like trying to trying to recreate um, an order book on chain, 
via constant like, I mean that that's such a uh, su- such an amazing product um, and you know pseudosop is trying to do the same for uh, nfts um, and I think you know these like Unity v3 and um, pseudosop is gonna be the best way to earn yield um, on non majors okay like Bitcoin and ether right you can like LP like track of the GLP earn yield that's really easy uh, but if you want to earn yield on like Lido like what are you gonna do right like stake it on something like no that's not really gonna work uh, so let's actually go over um, I I've already gone through um, the pseudosop example, right? That's kind of cool. Let's talk about um, Lido. Okay, so there's this really cool tool called the Revert Finance. Um, um, I guess I'll t- talk about Sleekwise too um, here. Okay, so uh, Revert Finance kind of goes over, I guess, top V3 positions. Um, I, I already filtered it, right? You can go to the filter, you can select two assets, um, and then look at the current uh, uni V3 positions. Because uh, all Uni V3 positions are NFTs, so they're not fungible. Um, and if you're unsophisticated, maybe not. okay, like I'm sophi- un- I'm unsophisticated, right? Like I-, I don't really do Uni V3, but I know how it works. Um, uh, so maybe I'm not like at a position to talk about this. But um, if you do want to, I guess, copy current positions, what you can do is go to Revert Finance, and you know, um, I-, I recommend looking at the like the like uh, LP positions with like a high age, I guess, because you know. It's going to be a low uh, low likelihood that uh, your uh, LP position is going to go out of range right? because if, if it's out of range, you're not going to make money. Um, so, for example, if you want to buy Lido, right, uh, to speculate on like the LSD narrative, um, you can, I guess I'll click on this top one because this thing has been printing money. Um, so this thing has been, go- uh, been around for almost two years and uh, it's up $600,000 in USD. It's made 300K in ETH, 300K in Lido, and uh, let's wait for this to load, right? Uh, it's providing ranges between 0. 0.0003 to 0. 0.0022 Lido to ETH ratio, right? So these blue purple dots. So if you just wanna like, practice, right? You can just copy this person's position and then expect to earn like roughly 64, 69% APR. Um, you can argue that, you know, you can this person can probably um, make the ranges tighter uh, because, you know, you know, it's, it's not really going above like 0.0018 or something. Uh, I mean, it, it's hard to kind of look at it, but um, you know, you can kind of copy farm these positions. I think that's kind of cool. Um, and I think, you know, for like larger cap altcoins like Lido, um, I think the LP and Green UV3 makes sense. For things like Stakewise, right, that I talked about, um, it's a little bit difficult um, because Stakewise is like a really low market cap and it's so volatile um, and it's gonna be pretty difficult. Okay, it's, it's gonna be pretty difficult to um, increase. Like for, this person pulled twenty four dollars worth of assets, I guess, um, in this ratio, and it's already up hundred dollars, right? Um, uh, maybe it's not that scalable, but you know, I guess this position is printing. Oh, I, I thought I clicked on something else, but um, yeah, maybe let's look at this. This thing's only been around for one point five days, uh, so okay, and it's already out of range. So uh, you know, it, it's kind of hard, right? Um, you need to be three, but um, I, I really recommend people like think about it, um, utilize these pools. Um, I mean, one of the reasons I don't um, try not to do UNIV3 versus is because um, it kind of doxes my portfolio and I kind of <laughs> don't want to dox my portfolio, right? Because I try to be as transparent as I can with all my positions. Um, and that, that's a really tight range. Like, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Uh, but anyways, that, that's uh, that's kind of it. Um, it's, we've been going for 58 minutes. I hope there was some value. I kind of rambled on, um, you know, kind of rambled on about it. <laughs> About a, about, about a bunch of things. Um, I didn't think I drink enough coffee today, uh, but I guess the takeaway is, you know, I think um, the state ETH benchmark is really hard to beat for new projects. I think they're gonna struggle. Um, so more TVL will consolidate uh, towards like the safer protocols, um, or, you know, even if they're new, right, they're gonna have like a docs founder, or they, they need to have like a docs founder with a strong uh, VC backing or something in order for them to attract liquidity, um, but that doesn't, but that doesn't necessarily mean that um, uh, it's going to be like a good investment, right, for the token. Um, and now that Alameda is blown the fuck up, right? We are the Alameda now. We have to be the ones farming and dumping, um, and then with the yield, maybe buy things that you actually like. Um, it's not fun. It's not sexy, um, but actually, it's, it's kind of fun, right? Like, I mean, once a week, I look at my crops and I, you know, I some sustainable farming, and then I take my. Uh, take my harvests and I sell it to like the local mar- market and then I like buy I don't know like more coffee or something right it's it's it's, it's kind of like real life um, on chain stablecoin yields not that great uh, so if you're going to farm something with stable coins has to be something with upside in my opinion um, show, show protocol on farming right um, probably not going to be worth much but you know 
I'm a dreamer. Um, and I think, you know, getting into NFTs at the top didn't make any sense. Um, people have been making fun of me for getting into NFTs right now, but I think, you know, like when else are we going to get into NFTs? Um, other than like when the markets are like down so much uh, so that's I'm kind of experimenting with you know, different types of uh, like NFTs like which one to buy which one to LP um, I'm personally a fan of the Pudgy Penguin ecosystem um, I'm probably going to be utilizing all my profits from my pseudo pools to accumulate more Pudgies um, and uh, you know I shared how you can earn yield on certain NFTs if you are comfortable enough being a liquidity provider I don't think it's that complicated. Uh, I can actually kind of go over it if you want to. Um, so you can create a new pool. Uh, I want to earn NFTs. I want to deposit Ether. <laughs> oh, 0.69. I, I, I did not even plan that. 0.69 and, um, uh, okay, Pudgy Penguins. Okay, like I don't have enough, obviously, but let's, um, I don't know what the Pudgy 4 is. Let's see. Um, Pudgy Penguin 5.23, that's, that's up a lot. Uh, let's just use round numbers. Uh, actually, no, let's use 5.23. Uh, was it this? Okay, it's this tab. Okay, um, start, starting price 5.23. Um, if you go to OpenSea, um, the creator fee is 5%. OpenSea takes 2.5%. So, you know, if you, if you, you just have to compete with that, right? So, um, I like exponential curves. Um, uh, and uh, uh, let's talk about the fees first. Let's charge 4.5%. Um, and uh, my delta, let's say, is 4%, right? So, every time someone buys or sells an NFT, the price will just by 4%. Um, buy, uh, sell up to, let's say, five penguins, um, and I want to do, provide enough exit liquidity for people by buying up to three penguins, for example. So if I want to create this pool, uh, I need to deposit this much ETH and that much uh, penguins, um, and my curve looks like this. So um, I'm going to be willing to buy three penguins at the price 4.605, 4.428 and uh, 4.258, right? Um, because it's just an AMM, right? Uh, I'm not like manually bidding things. Uh, and if people buy my NFTs, um, I'll buy the first one at 5.23, second at 5.439, uh, etc. right? And I'll be fully out of my pudgy, pudgy penguins at 6.118. Um, and if you, know, if you wanna sell at a higher price, then maybe you can like up this to you know, like 10%, right? And then you know, you'll sell your last one at uh, 7.65. Um, who knows, right? I mean, I, I have no idea. Uh, do not listen to me because I am down money. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Um, I guess bear markets are rebuilding, so I created this new website, Humble Farm Army. Um, you know, feel free to go through this uh, if you're interested. Kind of goes over on my uh, my, my paid Discord. Um, to be honest, it's a bear market, so you know, for most people, I think it's better to like reinvest capital into the markets than you know joining this. But if you want to take um, your knowledge to the next level, uh, meet like a couple hundred people uh, that actually care about DeFi, right? Uh, fundamentally driven people, um, you, uh, it, it could be worth it for you. Uh, but to be honest, right? Um, like maybe buy more ETH, right? <laughs> that might be better. Uh, so thank you guys for watching, uh, and uh, see you guys in 2023. I'll try to make more videos uh, next year. Um, yeah, bye bye. Have a good one.